I am actually, um, I, I'm a little early, but I am going to get started um, because um, a few things. This is a, um, there's a lot to cover. And also, um, I want to get to a demo and I want to get to your questions. And just um, for your guys' uh, information, this is kind of an advanced topic. So um, if you're just getting started with um, like Flux or Argo, um, you may be like, that's not, that's, that's not a problem we're running into. I'm like, don't worry, you'll get there. So <laughs> GitOps pipelines, right, is I like to call everything everywhere all at once. My name is Christian Hernandez. I am the head of community um, over at Acuity. Um, I'm, I also refer to myself to GitOps Kingpin, um, which was an inside joke that probably only three people get, but I stuck with it. So um, let's talk about pipelines. So. Um, when we think about pipelines um, and when we think about like delivering software, um, this is kind of the like what we have in our minds, right? Like we have like uh, we think of this kind of linear process where it's like okay, like an event happens and some sort of like build happens and some sort of test happens and you know things get promoted, um, you know from one stage uh, to the other. Um, stage one environment to the other environment and so this is kind of um, like in your head this is kind of like what what you have and this is kind of like the expectation but the reality is much different right the reality looks kind of like this right there is yeah uh, there's, there's some event that happens like either a big change um uh, an application change like right? some sort of uh, like code merge um you know you build it in tests uh you build it in, in the you know deploy it to the dev environment um, you run some tests against it, it goes to the staging environment, uh, then you kind of do a canary, right, blue-green type of thing, all right, this is rejected, this isn't, this is approved to uh, prod, right, environment, or like a pre-stage environment, there's a manual analysis, there may be a hot fix, and all this process, like, triggers other processes that have other processes that have other, and you, um, this is kind of like the reality of what um, pipelines and CI/CD is right. We tend to think of it as a linear process, but it's actually uh, more fragmented than that. And so, um, what I'm here to talk about today is that, in the context of GetOps, is what I say. In, in the context of GetOps, uh, CI is being overused um, to do the job of CD. Right. When you think about it, um, CD uh, CI pipelines it has a uh, CI has a specific goal. Right, given some code, build an artifact out of it, right? Um, given something, build me something out of this. Um, and it's predefined, or the idea is that they're short-lived, the CI processes. Um, it is, uh, it's a kind of like a one and done job that happens uh, during the, this process. And it's really smaller in scope. Um, there's like a top-down definition. It's like really suitable for like end-to-end -end repeatable unit tests, things like that. Um, in a CD pipeline, the goal is given an artifact, roll it out somehow, roll it out safely. Um, and you know, while CI processes are short-lived, CD processes are really indefinite. We don't really know. It may run really, really quick. It may run for weeks. I know. Um, I worked with some folks that it's like, yeah, like we run, um, you know, we run a canary for like four or five weeks before we actually know when to promote it, right? So it's kind of indefinite. We don't know. It's sometimes really, really short. Sometimes it's really, really um, long. Um, and it's really larger in scope. Um, it requires you to be able to do hot fixes, A-B testing, um, you know, continuous verification. And even when you deploy something into production, that's really not the end of it. It really only ends when the next deployment happens because when some, something is production, you don't stop monitoring it. You don't stop um, looking for errors. You don't. You, it's, it's basically an ongoing thing. Um, and we moved from kind of a um, a synchronous process of a CI/CD, right? And now we have this declarative infrastructure of Kubernetes where people are adopting Kubernetes. And now you have, um, you want to do, um, I, I see there's Gerald in the back. I, I, like, I like to quote him. He goes, you want, you, you're, now you're trying to marry um, asynchronous processes with synchronous processes. And it's kind of, kind of weird in the context of GitOps, right? Um, and so, um, you know, people think about, what about Argo CD, 
right? I'm, I'm from the Argo side of things, but um, maybe this exists in Flux as well. But Argo CD really is focused on like deploying a change from Git or a source of truth to a single targeted environment. Um, and uh, if you're using application sets, really just remember application sets just create applications. So you're like, oh, you know, I deployed to multiple environments with one YAML. Like, yes, but you're still defining multiple application. Application set only just creates applications. So um, Argo CD only understands to deploy something from Git to a single target environment. But it doesn't understand things like uh, relationships between multiple deployment targets, right? Like, like how, how they differ from, from each other. Um, the, or Argo CD doesn't provide a pipeline to try to orchestrate some, some of these things. Um, it doesn't write anything to Git, right? It, it's, it's kind of, it takes the, um, the idea of like the Unix philosophy of like do one thing but do it very, very well. And that's kind of where Argo CD um, sits. And, um, and you have to use other tools, like the Argo CD doesn't like verify updates after deployments. You know, of course, there's post sync hooks and um, Argo rollouts and, and things like that. But there's other things that need to come into play to do um, updates, right? And so what does promotion look like in a GitOps context? Um, you know, in, in, in GitOps, promotion actually becomes, like we have this, um, declarative infrastructure that's supposed to make it, you know everything cloud native, everything easier, but it actually becomes a little harder using GitOps because um, if you think about it, and and this came from this actually slide came from a, a conversation I had with someone at KubeCon in Amsterdam. Um, a GitOps promotion could be one or many image builds, and or one or many Git repo commits, and or one or many Helm chart updates, and those process have other one or many things that need to happen there, kind of everything everywhere all at once needs to be um, orchestrated. And actually microservices compounds this problem because now like it ex exponentially like um, makes this problem worse. And you're kind of, I always say you're trying to hurt, you're not only hurting cats, but you're hurting like things of different species, right? Because the life cycle of of like configuration change is different than a code change is different from a Helm chart. Like those life cycles are kind of independent and they have their own things and you're trying to like orchestrate things that have different life cycles, right? And so um, coordinating a release is what this guy told me at Amsterdam. Coordinating a release just somehow got harder now that I'm using GitOps and Kubernetes. It's like this supposed to make my life easier. It actually got kind of harder. So um, I think um, uh, when I talk to people about this problem, like their eyes kind of light up. They're like, yeah, like that, that's, that's a problem that we're having. And um, at Acuity, um, it's a problem that not only we had, but also our customers were having. And so um, what's the answer is uh, a new open source project called Cargo. So this, um, uh, and again, completely open source, right? Um, this is kind of our working model at Acuity. And is the, the idea is, um, you know, the tagline is multi-stage GitOps application or orchestration, but, the, but it really is automated GitOps promotions. And so, um, and to talk about Cargo, I, it, we, there, there's some new terminology that comes into play. So like if you ever like look up Cargo, um, there's going to be all these terminology. You're like, what does these terminologies mean? I think I want to distill them down, um, down to what they're actually doing um, so go over some of the concepts of Cargo and how can it help doing promotions and moving away from using CI to do what CD is supposed to do. So um, the first concept is called freight, right? What is freight? It's, it's, it's basically artifacts and it's actually a collection of artifacts that need to be promoted together. So remember when I was talking about like, okay, like what does a GitOps promotion look like? I need to make a config change. I need to make an image update. I need a Helm update and, you know, ad nauseum and, and, or, and, or, and, or. So you can take all of those and we package them together in something called the freight. Um, and it's really an aggregation of all these things. That is what I was telling you about. Um, what Cargo does is it collects um, all these artifacts and promotes them together by writing them back to Git. So Cargo, it really focuses on um, not the actual deployment. It'll leave that to like Argo CD or Flux, but it, it, it'll uh, try to orchestrate a lot of these changes for you. Um, 
and it does so by writing back to Git. Um, we need to store freight somewhere, right? These artifacts somewhere. So uh, we have a CRD called a warehouse. Makes sense, right? You know, you store uh, freight in the warehouse before it gets shipped anywhere. And really, it's just a collection of freight artifacts. And um, it's where freight gets staged before it goes down to um, any, you know, further down the, the pipeline. And, um, and it comes, it, it does a few things, but it, it, the biggest, two of the biggest thing it does is one, it, it basically keeps track of freight and what is, um, what is promotable. And it does that with filtering rules, right? It's like, okay, based on specific filtering rules, I want to, you know, mark something as being able to be deployed, something that's not be able to be deployed, uh, things like that. So that's kind of with freight. So we have freight, which is basically just a collection of artifacts that need to be promoted together. And we have a warehouse where that freight gets stored or staged um, with filtering rules um, to determine what gets promoted. And uh, where is this running, right? So originally, we were like, we're like, oh yeah, it goes into an environment, it goes into an environment. But as we were like interviewing people and we were talking to people, when you ask someone what an environment is, you get a completely different answer depending on who you're talking to, right? If you're talking to a developer, especially a developer that just wants to code, it's like, well, what's dev? What, 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 what's dev? Well, well, dev, that's this version of my application. You talk to like a DevOps guy or like platform engineer, someone in systems, and they're like, oh, that's, that's, that's a, a boundary, right? That's like, you know, a set of firewall rules. That's a set of, uh, of, of VMs. That's a set of like, you know, um, you know, the security boundary of like where things run, and I may have, X number of applications. I don't know, you know, what version they are. I just know that they're running in this environment that I'm deeming, um, you know, dev or stage or production. So we're gonna. Uh, so we decided to avoid using environment, and we're actually thinking about okay, what is the purpose of these artifacts, right? And um, and so we came up with a term called stage, right? What stage is this? Are these artifacts in? So it really is a reflection of the purpose of an application instance, right? And not necessarily where it is. Um, and so saying that, <laughs> I'm gonna use environment and stage um, kind of interchangeably, but just know that I, um, when, I, when I mean environment, I actually mean stage, because uh, stage is like the purpose of this frame. And uh, stages include rule sets as well, um, like how to promote something. Right? Sometimes I want to run a customized build. Sometimes I want to run a Helm template. Sometimes I just want to deploy the raw YAML, um, so on and so forth. So it defines how to promote something, so how to basically hydrate those, um, um, you know, those manifests and where to store them in Git, and which corresponding Argo CD applications to sync. Um, again, I'll, I'll go that deeper. Um, we wrote first class support for Argo CD, but it's not just an Argo CD tool. And the next is what we call subscriptions. And the next concept of subscription is, can it be promoted? So it determines if a freight can be promoted or those artifacts can be promoted. And uh, stages can be subscribed to a warehouse and or one or many other stages. Um, and subscriptions let the downstream processes know whether something's promotable or not. So it, it basically, um, we keep track of of where of like what rule sets um, that this particular freight has passed. So meaning if it hasn't passed a specific uh, rule set or a specific stage, the next stage, it, you won't be able to promote it to the next one, right? It, it has the, um, uh, the provenance information about what, you know, where it came from and you know, what's uh, promotable. Um, and I like to think about it. I'm, I'm looking for a better analogy here. But I'm, I'm just thinking about, since I've been traveling a lot lately, I've been thinking about like TSA and like the airline lets me on the plane because they trust that TSA, that I pass their screening rules, right? And if I have a layover, I'm allowed on that plane because I was allowed on the previous plane. Subscriptions is kind of the same idea, right? I, you know, I, I have a piece of, uh, of these artifacts that I deployed and they're running just fine. And if they want to get promoted, I just send them on, you know, send them on over and the, the stage ahead of me say, oh, well, since you trust it, I'm gonna trust it. Um, and uh, uh, with subscriptions and stages, you can verify 
um, verify the promotion process between stages, right? So you don't just blindly trust something got deployed by blindly trusting Argo CD. You can run some verifications there as well. So doing good on time. So some of the Cargo's uh, features is, is basically um, you can view all your environments, your deployment targets, stages at a glance, see where they are, see where your artifacts are in a, a specific stage. Um, and understand the, the, the history or the lineage of your uh, promotion process, right? And so um, I think with that, I think uh, I want to show how it works. First, I'll show you the graph. So Cargo kind of sits in the middle to try to orchestrate all of this for you. So what happens is that uh, some process happens, CI, DevOps engineer, doesn't matter. Um, you know, either does a new build or a configuration change and they pushes it to Git or the container registry. And Cargo is moni uh, continuously monitoring those, um, uh, those repositories for you, right? And so it'll detect a change. I'm like, oh, you know, there's a new version of a container registry image, or there's a new version of this configuration. Um, what I'm gonna do is I wanna promote this by writing it back to Git, right? I'm gonna write it back to Git, right? Like kind of, um, I don't know if any of you use the image updater, or Argo CD image updater. I know Flux has a image uh, detector. Same idea, I detect a new image, I'm gonna write it back to Git. Um, and Argo CD or whatever GitOps controller kind of just does what it does, it actually doesn't know anything about Cargo. It, it, since it's tracking a Git repo, all it's doing is like, oh, there's a change, I need to you know, roll that out. Um, while that's rolling out though, Cargo um, verifies it by looking at things um, like Datadog, Prometheus, CloudWatch, whatever metrics provider you give it, it's really flexible in the metrics for it, and just verifies that that, um, that rollout happened, right? And so like if it was successful, not just Argo CD rolling it out, but other metrics as well as, as the metrics in the application, right? Because you need to determine if the application is healthy beyond just Kubernetes information, right? You need, it, you need to know your application is doing what you think it needs to do. And if there's an error, it'll you know, mark it as degraded in Argo and roll it back, kind of similar to what Rollouts does here. So um, as you can see, Cargo kind of sits in the middle to try to orchestrate a, a lot of this for you. Um, and so, um, and feel free to take pictures, but I did upload the slides. I usually don't do that, I'm really bad about that, but I did up the slides uh, for this presentation, so. Um, and then this repeats, right? Uh, steps uh, three and four repeat um, further down as you are progressing it down uh, the pipeline. So, um, next is the TLDR. Um, I like to think of it as cargo focuses on the delivery of artifacts, while the Argo focuses on deployment of those artifacts or GitOps tools. I see some Flux people there, so I don't wanna um, <laughs> say you have to use uh, Argo CD, but since I'm an Argo guy, uh, Argo CD focuses on the actual deployment of it. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't know about how it got delivered. That's what kind of cargo uh, fits in there. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt a demo. I recorded a demo because I don't wanna um, tempt the demo gods here. Uh, so I did get it down to five minutes, so I do have time for it. Um, but I am going to pause it at certain um, parts of it. So this is the Cargo UI. As you can see, um, I have, uh, I'm subscribed to two um, repositories. One's a Git repository and one's an image repository. And you see there I have a warehouse where it's constantly looking and um, uh, attempting um, to see if there's a, a, new, a new version. On the top, you'll see the freight line, what we call the freight line, but that freight is basically the artifact uh, version um, and where it's currently running, that's what the colors are indicating, is that, um, as you can see, they're all, each environment is running the same version here. And um, I think that's what I circle here, yep. And dev test, UAT, those are environments, but I'm calling them stages, member of the stages and I'm subscribed, and those are, uh, they reference different Argo CD applications. So um, I do show uh, my filtering rules, which where I'm gonna pause here. So I do have filtering rules. So here I say, in the warehouse, I say, hey, look for changes in this, um, in this Git repo, but actually I'm going, you know, track main, but um, only give me freight that is uh, tagged for release. 
So my semver con a constraint, uh, semantic versioning, anything that's greater or equal to 1.2.3. Same as the image. Look for new images that are semver tagged as 1.2.3. And those are my filtering rules. I don't want to retrieve, you know, as, as you can imagine, um, updating an image repository or updating a configuration repository. Like there's a lot of commits. There'll be a lot of noise. So I'm filtering those out. And when you promote something, you do definitely want to filter those out. There's going to be a lot of noise for you. So, um, so I'm going to go through a use case. So this use case is I have an application. And this application, there's going to be a new version of the image. Um, I'm going to create a new route. Um, and when I say a route, I mean um, a route in, in Golang, right? And um, make it appear on that top corner here, as I think I circle with my, um, I have three environments. Well, four, I guess. Um, and I'm going to put it in that corner right there, a new, a new feature. And so let me bring on here. This seemed faster when I recorded it. Yeah. So I have a new feature here. Um, so here is the Go code. Um, it, is, um, it is small, but it is um, an impactful one. Whereas, like, I'm creating a new uh, a new route, and this new route here, um, if I scroll down here, it, it so this new um, this new f uh, function here expects a configuration file, as you see at line 38. So uh, my app is expecting a new configuration file to be there, where it, it's actually not there now. Um, so this so not only is this a code change, but it requires me to make a configuration change as well. And I need those two to be promoted at the same time. So I have here, uh, as you can see, um, although not, not a big change in terms of like, you know, um, difficulty, but it's significant enough to where if I roll out the image, it's going to break the application. So I want my configuration change and my image change to go together. Um, and as you can see, I do this for each, each one of the environments slash stages. And I have one for you know dev, test, UAT, and production um, because it requires them all there. So, um, so what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to commit this. I'm going to merge my own pull request because that's just how I am. Um, <laughs> merge my own pull request, right? I think I think it looks good. Um, so basically, re, uh, releasing version 1.2.4 for the code, and then now um, you know this could be minutes. Days later, I'm going to um, merge the configuration change as well. And I'm going to have those go through their own pipelines. As you see here, um, I got GitHub Actions for you know, um, building my Go code and pushing that to production. And same for linting my YAML here. So I refresh, and I get nothing. I get absolutely nothing. You know why? Because I didn't tag these for releases. I'm just building an application. I'm just you know, changing the configuration code. Um, I get nothing because I have filtering rules in place because I only want to promote something when I, when I think it's ready. And I show that here. Um, yeah, cool, still doing good on time. Um, and then now I'm going to publish a release. This is the code uh, deployment configuration deployment release here. And I'm going to tag um, this to version uh, you know, 1.2.4, right, the next version. Um, and I'm going to pause there. Ideally, you'll have another pipeline that does this for you. I'm only doing this manually just to kind of show you the process. But ideally, when you do a release, you have a pipeline that actually does a release for you. But I'm doing this manually just for this demo. Um, then I go back to cargo. And when I refresh here, I should get new freight with um, the new Git version and the new image version. Um, I have a rule set. That says, um, if you see the, the name change to whatever that is, Waxin Woka, whatever it is, I guess, um, unlike Jaundiced Rattlesnake. I have also a rule set that I didn't show. I actually did this demo, recorded this demo last minute. I actually have auto promotion into my dev environment because I just want to see it in my dev environment. Um, and then I'll manually push to test. If it passes in test, it'll automatically push to UAT. Um, if it passes UAT, it actually pauses and I actually have to manually promote it. Uh, just to kind of show um, how you can either automate it or do it um, manually. So it's running in dev currently. If I, um, yeah, so if I, I switch back here, refresh that page, I get that the new route with the new configuration file. Cool, my app didn't break. All right, but uh, my test environment, 
uh, isn't up yet because I need to manually promote that. So when I click promote, um, that'll light up. I'll promote that. Um, as you see the little gear turning, um, you'll see also UAT promote because I have automatic, automatic promotion. Um, and those will, a cargo will automatically sync your Argo CD applications uh, because it has that first class support built in currently. As you see, I have that there. I have also it in the UAT, but it's not. Um, there, it's not in production yet. As you see, the, 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 uh, the name is, uh, is still different. So here, this is kind of cool. I want to promote this, but it actually syncs multiple Argo CD applications uh, to this version with one, uh, with one push. I see here that's syncing. That was out of sync. Now it's synced. They're all running now the same version. And now you have that version. So um, instead of orchestrating this with CI and a bunch of scripts, Cargo kind of took a declarative approach to this and basically collected all these, all these artifacts for you, wrote them back to Git, in, you know, depending on uh, different rule sets, and, um, and then it kind of just let the GitOps controller do what it does best here. And so, and then, ooh, nice, I have five more minutes. Uh, so the roadmap, okay. So um, originally we wrote Cargo with basically, we wanna orchestrate Argo CD applications. And we kind of took a step back and it's like, we want kind of a generic infrastructure as code deployment tool um, to do that in a declarative manner, right? So we want to support other deployments, Lambda function, terrible, uh, Terraform, CDNs, anything that has a configuration, uh, we want to be able to um, promote those as well. Integrate with other popular deploy tools uh, like Atlantis, Flux as well. Actually, I tested this. This works with Flux today. It's just they're just kind of disjointed because Cargo doesn't know how to talk to Flux, but if you just let Flux rec do its normal reconcile, that actually works today. Um, but we do want to write first-class support with other deployment tools as well. Uh, we want to support patch promotions. Right now, we're looking at specific branches. Um, we're looking at, uh, you know, as uh, your GitOps repo as a whole, we want to be able to target specific um, directories, right? So I don't care about anything else. I'm just looking at this directory. If this directory has a change, I want to promote something. Uh, so we want to do that as well. And then notifications and hooks to other notification services. I mean, obviously, you can do things with um, like Argo City and Flux today to do notifications, but we want to build first-class notification support um, with Cargo. And with that, I have, um, I have three more minutes, so I'm, I do want to get to some questions, but it is an open-source project. So um, open-source first. Uh, go to the Acuity uh, GitHub page. There's a Cargo there. It's, it's public. Um, join the community on Discord. I'm on, I'm on there. Uh, the engineers are on there. So acuity.io slash community or acuity.community. Those are um, there. We love to hear from you. Your use cases. We don't want to build this in a silo. We want to be able to build it to have everyone, um, you know, ha uh, for it to help everyone, right? Not just like the Argos uh, community, not just the Flux community, but just in general. So, um, and with that, I have like two minutes for questions, if anyone has questions, I could take them here real quick. If not, we can chat at the at the QD booth where I'll be. But is any any questions? Question here. Hi. Uh, so I mean, uh, the example that you showed me uh, was of one application, one repo. Yeah. How does that work for like microservices where multiple repositories are there? Certain things might have dependencies on each other. Versions uh, some can free; they have their own life cycle. Some can go, you know, to latest versions, stuff like that. How do you control that subscription then? Yeah. So um, the script subscription is, uh, like I said, one or many. So you have like m you can track many repositories, um, and because it's it's just an array, right? Like you just go, you know, repo, 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 repo. And then you can constrain them differently, right? I constrain them to be the same because I, I, I'm basing it on a, uh, a release, right? A release, but you can constrain them different, uh, differently. You don't have to do semver constraint. You can do uh, other constraints. I, I forget at the top of my head different constraints are. So you can set up different rule sets by what is considered a promotion. So, yeah. 
Uh, besides the get right back, what would you say are the major differences between um, this sort of idea and like what happens instead of, instead of a solution like Kempton today? Yeah, I'm not too familiar how Kempton does it uh, today, um, but uh, Cargo has, um, has the ability to uh, do, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, I guess they, they call it rendered manifests or they call it like a hydrated you know, uh, manifest. Cargo can do that and it'll um, deploy that configuration into a specific branch. So you can, basically you have deployment branches at that point, um, I don't know how Captain does, or um, or any any other tool does that. That's how Cargo does it, um, and I think that's kind of like left over from kind of how they do they did things at Intuit. I'm, they can correct me if they. Um, it's kind of left over from from that aspect, um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with with Captain enough to make a comparison. Yeah. And you don't want the second thing coming in that get deployed to production because they came in. Oh, okay. Gotcha. To render everything at the start. There's a, another question, probably the last question, because we're up, maybe up at time here. Oh, hi. Um, great presentation, by huh? the way. Um, so my question is, like, when you uh, were triggering the pipeline, the CD pipeline, um, mm -hmm. or cargo, essentially, uh, yeah. was did you cut a release and then it triggered? Or, or? Yes. So um, I, I, I did that manually, but basically um, you can have cargo set up to, like, when you cut a release, that's when I'll present to you um, new something that's promotable for you. That's, so the artifact, that what we call freight, we'll, okay. it, it's, de it's dependent on the... Um, on the on the constraints, I put a semver constraint. So basically, anytime I cut a release, it'll try to promote it into the dev environment. So would you say that is that your recommendation that uh, um, we should yeah, people it, should be cutting releases? To yeah, it, de it, it it honestly depends. So um, that's how I would do it. That's how I would use the tool. Um, but it's pretty flexible to have different different. There there are, there are different um, uh, uh, filtering rules and um, rule sets that you can put in place depending on how you do re release. Right. That, that's how I do it, because just because that's how I used to do it <laughs> when, when I was running systems is, um, but the, it, it's pretty flexible. Got it, thank you. Yeah, and, and like that, we're out of time. So any questions? Um, we're at the booth, at the Acuity booth. You can talk to me or other folks there. <laughs>